Welcome. This is Brenda Harris greeting you in the precious name of Jesus. Have you heard that Jesus loves you? I've told my family off and on since I'm a widow on my own in my senior years. I have my mom, my two sisters, my brother, and when they say something to me or give me advice or suggestions or care about my opinion, sometimes I will say, I am so glad that I have someone on this earth that cares whether I live or die. You know, we all want love. We all want someone to care about us. But there is one person, Jesus, who loves us more than anyone on this earth could ever love us. And it's so important that we make him Lord of our lives. I would like to read part of this beautiful psalm. It's 107. It's been blessing me so much and just calming my soul and soothing my fears because my sister will be going through that surgery tomorrow. And here's what some of the psalm says. It says, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word, and he healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. And it says, They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distresses. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet. And he guides them to their desired haven. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people. And I'm going to give him praise right now. And I'm going to do a little bit of exalting. And you may have heard some of these stories before. But I have lived a pretty sheltered life. But there have been times in my life when God has absolutely worked divine miracles. And I'll start with my sister Sherry. One time she was visiting Mama and she brought young Khalil. Oh, he's probably around five years or so. I don't remember exactly how old he was. They went in through the door and Sherry slammed the door. And when she did, Khalil screamed because his fingers were slammed in that door. Sherry said that door was completely shut on his fingers. There was no space. It was shut. And she opened the door and brought Khalil in. And Mama ran in and got some ice and put it on his fingers. But they began praying for Khalil's hand. And then Mama told Khalil, she said, Say, Jesus, heal me. And he said, Jesus, heal me. He was just crying. And right before their very eyes, his hand went back to be perfectly normal. That's the power that God has. The power that created the universe. The power that created us. That's what God does. Oh, praise his name forevermore. And then... 
there was that time that my sister Linda had her young baby, her grandchild, was in the ER, and he had meningitis, I believe that's what it was, and it was a disease that children do not recover from, and generally speaking, and so they were so upset, and he was just burning up with fever. And she knelt down in the ER and prayed for that grandchild. And did you know God worked a miracle, a divine miracle, on Colton? They took him home that evening, and he was healed. Linda had called me, and she said, Brenda, I want you to kneel down wherever you are and pray for him. I was at church at the time, and I left the church and went outside and went over there to the west side of the church where there was a piece of land out there and I knelt down and came in to agreement with Linda and Linda had other people praying and God answered our prayers and then there was that time that my brother Dennis had a horrible thing on his knee it was eating into his knee and they thought it was a boil so they were putting poultices on it with apple cider vinegar to try to make it well but it turned out that he had that disease in the blood it was poisonous uh, I forget the, what they call it but it's when that poison is running through your blood and you will die in a short amount of time. And so the Lord had given me a dream. Oh, this dream wouldn't leave me, I'm telling you. This dream wouldn't leave me. And I dreamed that my brother was standing before his maker. And all that next day, I kept thinking about that dream and it wouldn't leave me it was just bothering me and I couldn't forget it and I said Lord are you wanting me to call my brother and tell him and then I thought if I call him and tell him he's going to think I'm crazy and then finally at the end of the day I was lying next to my husband in bed and we had sat down to watch a, a movie and I told myself, put that dream away from your mind and quit worrying and just enjoy your evening with your husband. Well, after about a minute or two, I jumped up out of that bed, got my phone, went out on the back porch, and I called my brother. I couldn't stand it anymore. And he answered the phone. And I said, Dennis, I had a dream about you. He said, what was it? And I said, I dreamed that you were standing before your maker. And he said, what do you think it means? I said, I think it means you're going to be standing before your maker. And he said, well, I've got this boil. And his wife had been putting a poultice on it. And then my mom called him and told him, he says, you get to the ER right now. So he went to the ER, and they started putting him on IVs right away to kill that in his blood. And he would have been gone in two days, they said. He had 48 hours left. So... God worked a divine miracle in Dennis's life. And then my mom has many miraculous things happen in her life. But this one time sticks in my mind about when she was very young 
and I was just a little child and we were living in Puerto Rico at the time because my dad was in the service and that's where he was stationed and they were all out with friends and they were on this beach and mama was out in the ocean swimming and she got out too far and she got into trouble and the tide was pulling her out to sea and this man saw her and he went and rescued her and mama knows that God miraculously intervened on her behalf because she was being pulled out to sea and she would have drowned she would have lost her life and there are many other instances in our lives and in one in my own life was when my husband was diagnosed with black lung disease and we were in the ER oh we didn't know what was facing us we didn't know what lies ahead in front of us at that time and they took him back to this back room to examine him he had had a collapsed lung and he had had that for a few days and we just didn't know it during that Thanksgiving time he had lifted his grandchild up and that was too much for his lungs and his lung had collapsed and then he went and got an examination and then they called us that Saturday and said get to the ER right away he has a collapsed lung so we went in there and they took him back to the examination room they took me to this room by myself and it had a long hall in it and a desk where the staff sometimes sat but I was in there by myself and I heard this noise at the exit sign I looked down there and I thought what is that what is that noise and I didn't see anything. And then I looked down and started praying again. I heard the noise again. And I looked up. And I heard footsteps coming down the hall. And I thought to myself, Jesus? My spirit just knew it was Jesus almost immediately. And I kept looking down that hall and I heard those footsteps coming down and then he got right next to me and I looked up and I tried my best to see his face I couldn't see him but I felt his mighty presence it was the most comfortable soft beautiful presence and he spoke to my mind and he said everything will be taken care of and I still tried to see him and I couldn't but then I picked up this brochure that one of the staff members had given me she had given me this brochure and had said to me here's a list of organizations that you can call they help people in your situation so I started calling those organizations and did you know that one of those organizations came through for us because my husband ended up going through about four surgeries and our bill was absolutely astronomical Medicare paid about 80 percent of the bill and we were left with owing $70,000 and one of the organizations paid it and we didn't have to pay a penny but my husband came home and he passed away in 2017 but during that time I know the Lord was with us and I can tell you more things that happened that he was with us and then I knew he was with us but 
I don't want to make this video hours long. You know what I'm talking about. But then after he passed away, I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, I don't understand why you let him die because we had prayed for his healing. And God answered my prayer. He gave me a dream. And in this dream, the bottom line of the dream was, I am sovereign. So I have accepted his sovereignty. And I give him great praise and great glory. And I said, Lord, I, I thank you for the time that you gave me with Jerry. And I got to see what it was like to have a soulmate. It was wonderful because Jerry was the most gentle, kind man that walked the face of this earth. He really was. That's why we had such a good marriage because he was so kind and good. Sometimes I have a tendency to be very selfish. But Jerry was wonderful. And I thank God for all he has done for our family. And I heard this wonderful song. Do you really know my Jesus? I wish you would look it up on YouTube. In fact, I think I'll put the link in the description so that you can listen to it. It has really blessed me. It says, do you know he loves you? He does. He loves us with an everlasting love. And he's going to keep on answering our prayers. And he's going to keep on working divine miracles for us. That is so wonderful. And I just say a prayer over each one of you today. I pray God send each one of them their miracle. Send them answers to their prayers. Lord, I thank you for that dream you gave me about the sheaf that was full of miracles. Those white stalks. It was full of divine miracles. Oh, and my mom brought out a good point about the sheaves, that song, Bringing in the Sheaves. She said that's talking about bringing in people to accept Jesus as their Savior. The salvation of people. Oh, that's beautiful. And that sheaf was so full of light you ought to go look up that video it's called sheaves and i'll tell you about the dream that the lord gave me but the lord is with you the lord loves you have you heard that he loves you amen <laughs>
Yeah.